muscle of my clavicle area. And it's just spreading. It's a very, very aggressive cancer. I'm speechless, you know, I'm so speechless. And, it, and, it, and at times I'm so mad that even though in the back of my mind I knew that the DTF powder could cause cancer and I didn't take it serious enough. You know, I, I thought in my mind, no way, not me, you know. Come on, that's just a myth. Look at all the Chinese people using powder by hand. And now, you know, I've got a very, very short time. Hey, what's up guys? My name is James. Welcome to Essential Print Supply. And if you're here today, you're here for a reason. So we're talking about DTF safety concerns. Now there's starting to, at least from the time of this video, there's two videos that are out currently talking about DTF powders and concerns about cancer. A brief explanation about this. There is a YouTuber by the name of Brother Ernest. He somehow has been diagnosed with a form of cancer, I think it's called an antiplastic cancer. But either way, we're gonna link that video below. Somehow it's being possibly related to DTF. Some of the things I wanna talk about today are the concerns in regards to DTF. Because some of the statements that are being made are that nobody's talking about the dangers of it. Nobody's saying that this stuff can cause cancer. Nobody's doing this, nobody's doing that. They know the risk, but they're selling it to you anyways. This is not true at all when it comes to these companies and the equipment that they're selling specifically. Now we're gonna talk about the details because one of the influencers, uh, you got Alan Wade from a -Dub Productions, I believe that's his last name, but very cool guy came out with a video recently talking about the dangers of not protecting yourself and what you probably should do in regards to uh, you know having adequate you know PPE protection and then ventilation and, and when it comes to just running a DTF machine period um, I respect Alan he's been in the industry a long time uh, Alan talks about a lot of different equipment does a lot of reviews kind of like what we're doing here on the channel and then you've got Stan Banks who has his opinions and issues when it comes to DTF and companies, you know, in which he's worked with. So we want to talk about here at Essential the precautions that need to be taken. When it comes to DTF printers, a DTF printer by itself is not going to cause cancer. It's not going to be harmful to you. It's a piece of equipment like any other printer. A shaker is not going to cause cancer alone. The equipment alone is not going to cause cancer or do you any harm. Now, the products that you're using possibly can. So these are the things we're gonna be focusing on today and there's gonna be a lot of information that I'm gonna give you that's information that I personally researched. We're gonna be talking about dates so that you know that, hey, this stuff has been talked about. It has been stated. It legally has to be presented when they're trying to sell these types of products. Now, these products are gonna be your DTF powder, and it can even be the DTF inks. It can also be the DTF film. All three of these are a factor when it comes to possibly harming you. When it comes to certain levels of where these products can be. In general, they are safe, but when not properly handled, this is where it becomes the problem. And in the case of Brother Ernest, I feel for the guy. I personally, you know, spoken to the guy before. I've watched his videos since he first came out. He was one of the guys that kind of pioneered the whole DTF movement and started it on YouTube by using old printers, converting them to DTF printers, uh, doing the whole film in the bucket, shaking the powder on the film and then flicking it, getting all that powder off. Now what happens in those circumstances 
is what's been talked about, airborne qualities. So let's talk about DTF powder. It is a polyurethane TPU powder. It's been stated on multiple websites that it has non-toxic properties, but when it reaches a certain level of heat in a curing process, the fumes can be toxic. This is why you need to have adequate ventilation. There are many of you that are doing DTF that are either setting it up in a bedroom, setting it up in a home and not understanding the meaning of proper ventilation, the meaning of proper security when it comes to what you're putting on, gloves, eyewear, respir you know, respiratory uh, masks, as well as maybe any you know long sleeve shirts that you might wear or maybe a suit or an apron just to keep yourself as clean as possible. Now these are some of the things that you definitely want. Here's the thing you need to know. Anytime you buy a DTF powder, there will be a safety data sheet attached to that powder that you can look at. In this case, this is one that I downloaded this morning from DTF Station. You know, it says right here on the top, polyurethane TPU. Now, what does TPU stand for? TPU is very similar to TPE. In these cases, TPU is a thermoplastic polyurethane. TPE is a thermoplastic elastomer. So these are flexible elements that are added. They have elastic properties in them which gives the DTF powders the stretchability that they need when it comes to printing products and they also create that soft to touch in them. So that's what TPU represents. This is going to be linked in the description. You can check this out. But chemical nature, human protective equipment, respiratory fitted with high efficiency particulate filters and organic vapor cartridge is used. So this is something that you might want to think of. Now, what are we talking about? Let me grab it. Now, this is an old one, but this is kind of something that you might want to wear when it comes to handling the powder by itself. Now, I used to use those all the time when I did any type of painting, when I did any type of granite work, because I used to install granite, so we would you know, grind and, and cut sometimes on site certain things. But what it says here, you definitely want to have good ventilation and safety regulations should be followed when it comes to handling this type of equipment. One thing we need to know is that the DTF powder has very fine particulates. These particulates can get in the air from being either shaken, from being, you know, um, agitated these particulates can get into the air. So we definitely see that most shakers have some type of, of either built-in filtration system that handles the vapors, the fumes, or it'll have an external filter system that has maybe a hose that comes off of the machine that again handles the vapors. So when it comes to setting up DTF in your home, shop, garage, wherever, Having the proper extraction is gonna be key. Now we're talking about inline exhaust fans, okay? This takes the, the air, the fumes, and extracts them out of the property in which this equipment is based. I have this on my laser engraving system because I'm not trying to breathe in, you know, woods that have certain adhesives or maybe some type of material that might just have weird elements to it. I don't want those fumes just me breathing them in, so I have a very high powered exhaust system attached to that laser engraving system. It's no different with DTF, guys. I mean, we have to have this type of system in place. You know, there are plenty of companies that sell inline exhaust fans, you know, attached to some tubing. This is what you guys should be setting up where it actually pulls. It's one thing to just attach a hose. Okay, that's not gonna do much just attaching a hose because you wanna be able to have the suction, suck that air out and point it in a different direction, namely away from you. Now, for those of you that are using heat presses to cure your you know, DTF sheets, your powder, this could create a cause and a concern. The fumes over time, 
we're talking about long time exposure and depending on how close you are to these fumes, uh, they can possibly, but typically it's at very high heat levels, which typically you're not really that high to start releasing certain type of chemical properties into the air. Now what I do know, and this was based again on research, is that, let me find it. Okay, so this was from a company, Exometry. Okay, so this company, was doing a lot of TPE versus TPU comparisons. What it says here, because I, I, I caught a comment in one of those videos where the individual was using a heat press to do these things and saying he got headaches. All of a sudden he's freaking out, thinking, he, you know, who knows. Now it says, although TPU is non-toxic in nature, I'm reading it directly, it releases harmful fumes when exposed to fire or other chemicals. When burnt, TPU gives off a distinct odor that can cause headaches. Whereas TPE is non-toxic and has a faint aroma when burnt. Here in these statements, again, it says both of them are non-toxic in nature, but when they get to a certain extreme, they can present certain qualities. Now we're talking burnt. It says when burnt. It doesn't say when it's just heated up enough to cure or melt the adhesives. This is one thing we have to keep in mind, everybody, is this is a polyurethane plastic style adhesive. And we definitely want to take care when it comes to that stuff. We don't want to be breathing in any type of adhesive into our throats. What is that going to do when it starts bonding to anything that's within our throats? And the other key point is if this adhesive does get into our bodies and is ingested, the reaction that it's gonna have with our bodies, the, the acids and everything with our bodies could create a toxic element. That can do more harm than anything. So this is why having a good respirator with good filters is key and should be important for you going forward when you are using the shaker element, certain films, certain inks. Case in point, would you use Roundup? Would you spray all your weeds in your yard with Roundup with, with no mask on? Spraying the Roundup in general isn't dangerous, but breathing the fumes that come off of it can be. Another point, you may have a fireplace in your house. Now the fumes that come off of that can harm you, but you still have a fireplace, right? So the point is, the fumes can be dangerous. You need a well-ventilated work area or you need to specifically uh, set up ventilation where the shaker is, where your printer is, where the heating element is. Being able to extract the fumes coming off of these is gonna be the most important thing you can do. Now, one thing to look for when it comes to your DTF powders. All right, so. These haven't even been opened yet, but these came with my DTF printer and shaker. So here's the powder from DTF Station, the DTF Hot Melt Powder. Here is the ink. Now, although these don't say Ecotex on them, Oikotex, however you say it, they don't have the actual symbol on the actual product I think that maybe they should. These should say Oikotex or Ecotex certified on the bags because they are. So when you do go on DTF Station's website and you do look up the inks, you do look up the powders, they do have the Oikotex Standard 100 certification. Now, what does that mean? When it comes to that certification, and again, this link like the text right here. This link will be also put in the description areas. It basically goes through a toxicology of these chemicals and whatnot and basically considers if they're safe or not. I don't think a lot of these companies would be selling products that blatantly cause cancer. That just wouldn't happen. That, that product would be banned really quick and it, it just wouldn't happen. So here it says, 
A made in green by Oikotex label gives you the confidence that the product has been tested for harmful substances and was made in environmentally, environmentally friendly facilities. One thing you can do is always go to the websites and see if the products in which you're purchasing are Oikotex, Ecotex, whatever certified. It is a standard of safety when it comes to the printing industry. Uh, also, if you're printing for like, say for example, your DTF prints and people are buying them to make little kids clothing, having that certification is a good idea. Okay, so if you're ordering from a DTF company, it would also be a good idea to know that you're ordering DTF prints that are certified Oikotex. This is the bottom line. Be safe, use common sense. In this game, if you don't, something's gonna happen. Your health is gonna happen. In the case of Ernest, you know, which I'm sorry it happened to him, he even stated himself. He knew better, but yet he did it anyways. And we obviously see the results of what can happen over time with long time exposure. And it really sucks to see that happen. It really does. Hopefully that can spark enough attention to make everybody start looking at this because you're seeing people make videos of putting three or four machines in their bedrooms and then they got kids running around and babies and this powder is just everywhere. It's like, no, you're doing it wrong. Do it better. That's the point. Do it better. So just understand these powders are, they are non-toxic, but they still have to be handled with care. Your safety still comes first. You figure when, when the powders are going in the machine, it's agitating that powder. You know, it's going back and forth and agitating that powder. That powder is going up in the air slowly. It, it's going to rise. I've walked in the room sometimes and seen between the steam coming off of the film as is being cured and then the powders, I've seen rooms just clouded up. That's a room that doesn't have proper ventilation that can pose a problem. So we want to be safe. When it comes to touching this material, it doesn't say that it's going to really harm you. But of course, once again, common sense has to kick in and we have to say, hey, safety first, wash your hands, keep yourself clean, uh, wash your clothing whenever you're done using it for that day. Uh, wear some type of mask, okay? Something that's going to be able to filter out really fine particulates, especially when you're either putting away your DTF powders or filling up the powder area, swashing it around with your hand is probably the dumbest thing you can do. And then they say, once again, you don't really want to be sticking your hand in the powder and moving it around and trying to make it even because the oil and moisture off of your hands will make your powder all clumpy. Use some common sense, guys. Stay safe out there and understand this is a serious piece of equipment that is using products that can be harmful if not used in the right ways. So I'm gonna have links to all of this information that I'm presenting to you. There's, these are gonna be links based on uh, certain cancers, certain TPU versus TPE, the data sheets, the safety sheets. Now every company that I've seen so far since this information coming from DTF is from 2020. The date right there is 2020. DTF Station had it, All American Supply had it. I'm sure other companies like DTF Superstore have these data sheet safety uh, things. And if you're buying any type of product from these kind of companies, they legally have to su supply this information to you in some way, shape or form. Okay, so there is access to it. So for people to be saying they knew, but they did it anyways. Well, the person that bought it should have known as well and did their due diligence with looking at the data sheet. It's, it was there the whole, it's been there the whole time, as well as some of these companies are actually and had web pages that were up that actually showed how to basically properly set up your stuff and how to be safe. So to say that this information was never there is just inaccurate. It, it was there. It just takes a little diligence on us as the consumers to do our part in making sure we know about these products, making sure we know how to be safe and where best to set these pieces of equipment up. Otherwise they can be dangerous. 
So if I was to be curing on a heat press, which I probably wouldn't really recommend, you know, making sure there's some type of suction extraction thing there that's leading the fumes outside or out a window might be a good idea so you don't get headaches, um, you know, because those fumes can just jack you up. Making sure that, you know, maybe you buy a curing oven that has that ventilation set up for it. It's specifically set up as a little curing oven with a vented hose that goes to a filtration system, or you can even just set up your own hose and filtration system that leads to the outside of your house and into the air where it's not gonna cause a problem. Look into these things, guys. Look into extraction, inline fans. They're relatively cheap, anywhere from you know 50 bucks on up to 200 bucks. You can get these kind of fans that attach to the same type of hose as you can get, you know, with a dryer system, you know, a little three, four inch hose. So making sure you're being safe out there is gonna be the best thing you can do, guys. This is somewhat of a longer video, but I feel like it, it had to be presented in some kind of detail, just so you know that this stuff, it's, it's, it's fine. It's, I think it's gonna be fine. I think some of these guys are just, they're getting a little carried away with, I don't, I just don't, I just don't want you guys to be overly scared about something that really takes you getting involved with to be safe. Just be safe, take precautions, and you'll be fine. It's like I said, it's, you know, I used to do granite. There was no way that I would really ever cut granite or quartz without a mask on. It just, it didn't happen. Now you're starting to find out that a lot of these guys that are that used that are cutting quartz for like years now, they're all dying of cancer because now they found out that some type of, you know, chemicals or whatever they use to create quartz countertops has, uh, you know, something that creates cancer in, in people. And these guys are just dying of this stuff, you know. So having proper ventilation, filtration, and masks is going to be very, very, very important guys i can't stress it enough we don't know what we know until we know so this industry is still fairly brand new and i think going forward by making this video aware to everyone might reach some of these companies and they say okay we're going to start securing these machines just a little bit better especially the powder areas i almost think cobra flex with their liquid adhesive was on to something. And to me, it was the most innovative system because it didn't have to deal with the messiness of the powders, which also made the form factor even smaller. Only problem was, is it just didn't work. Like the stuff was cracking, it was splitting, and you know, it just got bad reviews and the machines were super expensive. Nobody wanted to buy them just to have those kind of issues. So this is where the powder kind of just took over. But again, you didn't see enough videos out there of anybody really talking about the safety of the equipment, like how to set it up. So we're gonna focus on that. We got the new shaker for the DTF printer. So we got the new series video coming out soon. The cool thing I do like about this particular shaker is on the top of it, it's got a built-in filtration system. So that is pretty cool. I think what I might do if I set that up is just i might set up direct line a hose that just sits right over the powder area where you where you put that that powder in in the shaker that way anytime i'm refilling that or messing with that or even opening it it's going to be able to extract fumes and, and keep those fumes out you know along with me wearing a mask so that's what i wanted to talk about briefly guys uh, is get just a little bit more detail about this equipment, about the actual powder, like the technical specs of the powder and what they're saying. But the links are all there so you could start doing your own research with these links and just seeing what it is you need to do to keep yourself safe. Now, last bit of news. My website is now up live and running. Essential Print Supply, E-S-E-N-T-L Print Supply. Long time in the making, guys. This site is now available for you guys to order your leather patches, to order your leatherette patches, burlap patches, stitch patches, print-on-demand clothing, bulk screen print clothing, 
DTF clothing, DTF transfers, and then also for you laser engravers, you can order custom blank patches as well, or you can, you know, have, have essential engraving for you. So very cool stuff. I've been looking forward to that. You can now go on there and order. So check out the website. You will need to register in order to see pricing uh, on the website. So go ahead and do that today. And we will catch you on the next video. Next video is actually going to probably talk a little bit more about DTF transfers, like how to order DTF transfers for hat patches. That way you guys can, whoever's doing DTF transfers on hats, you guys will know exactly the process of how to up, how to create and upload those files. So that'll be your next video coming. And then we're going to be having some videos actually putting DTF transfers on leather. I just ordered some new leather, so we're going to be messing with that. And then, of course, we've got some inf more information on the website. So watch my videos. They show you how to design and upload on the website. It's a very simple process. There are free templates you can download on my website. They give you all the patch templates. So you can simply grab the template you like, put your design on it, upload it on the site, check out, and you're done. So very cool stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. Hey, post in the comments anything that you might have relating to the DTF uh, topic for today. I'm just kind of curious like what you have to say. And uh, let's just uh, keep it safe, guys. Till next time, I'm James. Peace out, y'all.